everyone loves to talk about how the nine to five sucks and that you should always pursue your passion and just do whatever you love. And no one talks about the consequences or the drawbacks. It can negatively affect your creativity, your progress, and even your mental health. Hello everyone, my name is Man Ahmed Abdelgadis, Minimal Surah Hamdul Gamez. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering some of the main drawbacks and consequences of pursuing a full-time creative career and also how kind of to deal with them or how I've been able to deal with them myself. And this video also acts as a reminder for myself and for anyone else out there who might need to hear this. The financial instability. This can be extremely stressful if you don't have the support of someone in your life or if you don't have a cushion to fall back on, that could weigh very heavily on your creativity and your progress, which is why it is so important to understand the business side of things. If you're trying to jump into being a full-time creative without clients lined up out the door, then you have to understand how to be a business owner. And unfortunately for us creatives, it's kind of a little bit difficult to get the business side of things. But if you wanna thrive in your creativity, you have to be stable, you have to be calm, especially if you have responsibilities and people you have to take care of. So understanding the business side of things and the fundamentals of running a business can bring back that stability and make you more creative. And one of the main ways to understand the business a little bit more is to trust the numbers. Rather than giving in to the emotions, you have to look at the data, you have to look at the numbers. So you have to be in the driver's seat. You have to do outreach, you have to do marketing. You have to put yourself out there and it simply becomes statistics. The more you do, the more you will get. You gotta do your math, you gotta budget, you gotta do your taxes. All these things sound so boring and I realize that no one wants to do them, but if you don't do them, they pile up and they sit in the back of your mind and they occupy space that could otherwise be used for creativity. The second point I want to talk about is burnout. When you're in a nine to five, it's clear when you need to stop working. You stop working at five and that's it. But when you're working for yourself and you are trying to make that money to feed yourself or feed your family, it's so easy to go overboard because you know it's in your control. You know it's in your hands and you know if it fails, it's your fault. But we underestimate the power of burnout. Real rest is productive. Real rest is productive especially if you're a creative. Creative energy comes from a place of peace, comes from a place of calm. If you're trying to do something a little more creative, you have to give your mind the space to rest. Something I always catch myself doing is pretending to be productive, to feel productive, to feel like I'm progressing towards something, to feel like I'm actually doing something and this way I don't feel bad. But in reality, I'm just wasting more time and I'm not being as efficient as I possibly can because I'm not resting or taking care of my mental health for that matter. When you take breaks, when you sleep well, when you exercise, when you do all these things that are good for your body and mind, you have much more energy to be creative and you become much more efficient with your time. Instead of being stuck, pretending that you're being productive and not hanging out with any of your loved ones and not spending the time with the people who matter in your life. Understanding and knowing when to rest could be one of the most essential skills for a full-time creative to learn. And unfortunately, not many people know this. And this is something I'm constantly working on, constantly trying to be better at. It's so hard to do that when you're excited about things and motivated and, and know that you are in control of your own fate. But resting and being and just existing and relaxing is so important for so many health benefits and for your creative energy. Staining your medium of creativity. This is the biggest consequence of pursuing a career and something you're passionate about. Some of the things that pay the most can sometimes be the least fulfilling creatively. Your brain will start associating that medium with things that are not fulfilling. And when you keep doing that over and over and over, you can find yourself depleted fully of a passion. In fact, statistically, when most people combine their passion and their career, they end up less happy. It's like when you're dancing. When you're dancing alone at home and you're just without a care in the world, all these wonderful things are released. But when you're put on a stage and told to dance at a time where you don't wanna dance, 
for an audience, maybe an audience you don't even like. First of all, the dancing will become a lot harder. You won't be dancing as good, that's for sure. And second, if you keep doing that over and over and over, when you're home alone, you're not gonna wanna dance anymore. You're gonna associate it with work, or more realistically, a neutral experience, which robs you from the passion, which is the main reason you even wanted to venture into becoming a full-time creative. So two main ways you can deal with this conundrum. Number one is try to have a blast with every single shoot you do, with every single gig you do, whatever your medium is. Try to enjoy it. It could be very difficult at times, and I think some people have more tolerance than others. Find your happy medium and just pay attention and be aware of how your relationship with your medium or your art is changing. And the second thing I recommend is, which is not an option for a lot of people and could be a lot more difficult, is to build a runway for yourself to only do the things you absolutely love. And that requires a lot of saving, a lot of strategizing, or having a part-time job or a side way to make income, which allows you to continue to progress towards your end goal from your passion. Equally, I will say, some people will be better if they just fully jump in and burn the ship. Some people say, if you wanna survive on an island, make sure you burn the ship as soon as you get there. I think everyone's different and I think everyone kind of has their own level of tolerance. I personally chose the second approach as I was toying around with the idea of being a full-time creative. I realized that I was gaining so much from this medium and from this art. It was almost sacred to me. And I took my time building up that runway and I still struggle with a lot of these things and I'm still trying to build that runway almost as I'm on it. I can easily say I'm the happiest I've ever been struggling through being a full-time creative. I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with Sony in such a short amount of time. If you wanna check out how I managed to do that, you can check out this video. And if you want a quick exercise you could do in the morning that will make you a better creative and a much happier and more successful person, check out this video.